Hi everybody and welcome to A Case of the Jills. So yep, been working on quite the research paper the last couple of weeks. Now that it's done, we can get back to business. I also feel like every video I do, I have this same sweatshirt on. We'll just pretend I'm like, you know, those super geniuses that wear the same outfit every day to save brain cells. Yeah, let's just go with that. So today's video actually comes from a question that I seem to be getting uh, quite a bit lately. Actually, it's not a question, it's more of a caveat. So as many of you know, I do counseling and mentoring calls for those of you struggling with overtraining syndrome or uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea. And I'm noticing something that's coming up quite a bit lately when I'm talking to people on the phone. People will describe to me sort of what's happening with them and they'll talk about their struggles and then they'll throw in, I'm not elite, but or they'll sort of qualify their experience by saying, well, I'm not sure if this really pertains to me since I'm not elite. Sometimes people will throw in things like, well, I know this is probably something that happens to professional athletes or collegiate athletes. And then they sort of discount their experience because they don't see representations of people in their same sort of either age group or ability level reflected in the media. As somebody who was certainly not of elite status, but who struggled with hypothalamic amenorrhea and overtraining syndrome, obviously this made a lot of sense to me. I completely understand how it can throw you off to not see any mention of these problems except as they pertain to either professional or elite level athletes. But what I really want to do today is talk about the fact that that does not matter at all. I am here to tell you after three years of working on this stuff and researching and being in graduate school and mentoring hundreds of people, I would like to tell you that it does not matter one pickle whether you are elite, professional, or collegiate at all. So what I did was I actually did a little bit of research on what is considered an elite athlete. I went to the school database to understand what the definition actually is. There are two studies of interest, one of which is a meta-analysis involving 91 other studies. It's called Defining Elite Athletes, and it was in the Psychology of Sport and Exercise journal in 2015. This article actually proves that there's very little that we can say specifically defines an elite level athlete. In fact, some of the things that they use to define elite or professional athletes are things that would pertain to people who just happen to be training for endurance sport at a pretty high level. So for example, they mentioned things like an average of 13 hours per week of training. Yeah, like check. They mentioned things like having at least five or more training sessions per week. Check. They mentioned having a VO2 max of somewhere between 58.6 and 72.6. Check. They also mentioned that most people would have somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 years of participation, but some people can have as little as two. Check, check. This meta-analysis also mentioned a whole bunch of other things that define elite status, which really have nothing to do with physicality at all. Some of these things had to do with cognitive ability and reaction times, which certainly do not pertain to whether or not you would experience hypothalamic amenorrhea or overtraining syndrome. Just to round this off, there was one more article that I thought was interesting, which was called, What Does Elite Mean in Sport and Why Does It Matter? Indeed, why does it matter? And the authors for this were Williams, Day, and Stebbings. The fundamental fact of this article is just that no one can seem to come to an agreement of what elite status actually means. Basically, the point of this is just to say that even the experts don't know what an elite is, so we're certainly not going to sit here and judge what you're going through on whether or not you are defined by some ridiculous word. I totally understand why people are saying things to me like, I'm not an elite, but... It can be misleading because everything you see in the media is usually about elite athletes. This is normal. I mean, they're like celebrities. People are going to click on those stories. They're going to want to read those stories. Magazines and websites are going to want to publish those stories. Again, it's they're, they're in it for clicks and they're in it for, oh, that name of that famous runner that I know. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that that person suffers. And so obviously that's what we're gonna see represented in the media. The problem with this is that it's rare to see them talk about their struggles, which gives the impression that this happens rarely. That is also not true. And then we also have to remember that if we're reading research on hypothalamic amenorrhea or red S or female athlete triad or overtraining syndrome, most of this research is being done on elite or college level athletes because those are the athletes on the campuses where these things are being studied. So for practicality reasons, that's what you're seeing reflected in the research. But the problem is this, just because you don't get paid to run or you're not on a scholarship to run at a school, it does not mean that you do not train eat, sleep, and live like you do. And I wanna be clear about this. This is not just about running. This can literally be about any sport or activity that is kind of taking over your life. 
Over the years, I have mentored people from all kinds of athletics and all types of activities. I've spoken to bodybuilders and fitness competitors, CrossFit athletes, people who have done yoga to the point of losing their period. I have talked to dancers, rowers, people who participate in martial arts, horseback riders, rowers, I mean everybody. And I also wanna be clear that these are people who have varying volumes of training. They have varying distances that they train for. So let's say if we're talking about running, they could be track and field athletes all the way up to ultra marathon and every distance in between. They train at various speeds. So you've got your 10 to 12 minute mile runners and you've got your super sprinters. They have varying abilities. They're back of the packers and they're front of the packers. They have a varying number of years that they have been doing their sport or activity. Some people as little as two years, some people as many as multiple decades. And here's another crucial point. Their weight and body composition is completely different in almost all cases. There is not one specific body type, body weight, or body composition that seems to be linked to someone suffering from any of these problems. Also important to know is that there doesn't seem to be a particular age when this kind of these kinds of issues happen. I've spoken to people all the way from college age all the way up through 40s and even 50s in some cases. I've spoken to every decade there is, and I can tell you it's just as painful for everyone. So elite status, non-elite status, it really doesn't matter. I'll tell you the one thing that unifies everyone. The one thing that unifies everyone is that each and every single person has kind of hit this brick wall. It's this point at which the sport actually becomes more important than you. And for mental or physical reasons or both, you just can't keep going the way you're going. Unfortunately, that's the point when people reach out to try to find support and they see that it's lacking. You might even go to a doctor or a healthcare practitioner and start asking questions and they look at you and go, oh, but this doesn't happen to you because you're not elite. Or, oh no, you're too old for this to happen or too young for this to happen or you don't train enough for this to happen or your body is the wrong shape or size for this to happen. This could not be more damaging and more incorrect. Yes, it can happen to you. Yes, it did happen to you. Yes, it will happen to you. Your experience is just as valid and just as painful and just in need of support irrespective of your status. All right, I think I made that clear. I wanna give you the flip side of this too. If you are an elite level collegiate or professional athlete and you are struggling with amenorrhea and or overtraining syndrome or even suspect exercise addiction could be a problem for you, just because this is something that we would associate with your status, it does not mean that it is normal. You absolutely need to be getting a period. You do not need to be suffering with anxiety and depression in silence. And overtraining syndrome really just means that you haven't been getting the right guidance and coaching for your condition. I urge you to reach out to a dedicated healthcare practitioner, a therapist if necessary, or some other person that you trust to talk to about your situation. Although these conditions are associated with elite status, it doesn't need to define your elite experience. It's absolutely imperative that all of us understand, especially this month, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, the month of May, it's absolutely important that all of us know that our experiences are valid and that we all deserve care, support, and recovery. Last thing I wanna do is hear any of you say to me, I don't think I deserve help because I'm really not performing at XYZ level. Ah, no, no, no. You do deserve help. Whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're feeling, it's valid, it's important, and I see you. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it cleared up some thoughts you may have had about whether or not any of this stuff pertains to you. The answer is it does. So as you've heard me talk about in this video, I do mentoring calls. You can go to acaseofthegills.com and schedule there. You can also download a copy of my ebook of Frequently Asked Questions. You can email me at acaseofthegills at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are and I will see you again soon.